Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. I hope that you're doing well. Let me just put it out there. You need to have smelled at least one of these fragrances that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about here today, or you're a loser, not just any loser, a certified loser. Is there anything worse? But yeah, probably. But still, you don't wanna be a fragrance loser. You better hope that one of these fragrances you put your nose to. This isn't super crazy difficult mode. I'm not gonna go with just straight off the wall, random stuff you've probably never heard of. At least one of these you should have smelled. Let's jump into it and see if you're a loser. It's a game of sorts. Do you know these? Have you smelled them? Well, let's see. So we've got 10 slots here today. First up, a two for one, two fragrances taking up only one slot. They're both from Pino Silvestre, Aqua de Pino, Fougere, and Cologne. Do the bottles look familiar? Yeah, that's because they ripped off Aqua de Parma in the most hilariously obvious way ever. They even named the friggin' fragrance Aqua de, de Pino. Aqua de Parma, Aqua de Pino. Oh. But it's okay, because in fragrances, you can always rip off other people. It doesn't matter. You're not going to get sued. Yay. These are crazy cheap. Under $20. I think you can find them actually between 16 and 18 bucks at discounters. Yeah. They're both supposed to be kind of in a classic Italian style. I mean, what can you do with a budget like that? Not a whole lot, right? Most of the budget went into trying to copy the Aqua de Parma bottles and making a plastic pine cone cap. So this one, Fougere, it's really aroma chemically, a little bit similar to uh, Lo Super Major DC by Isi Miyake, only with a green tinge. Surprisingly though, it's really not that bad. I mean, you, you know what you're in for here. You know it's gonna be synthetic. Don't go into this and go, What? It doesn't smell like homage quality? And then cologne is more a classically citrusy and fresh style of scent. A little bit similar to Bottega Veneta's Illusione, only way cheaper. So there's the first two. What should we tackle next? Huh, how about Tricorn from Caswell Massey? Caswell Massey, that doesn't get talked about all that often in the fragrance world, does it? This is an old school fragrance company. How old school? That old school. For the United States, it's pretty good. That's good heritage, man. This one is a little bit spicy and very woodsy. I love the way it smells. The price on this is actually not that bad. $90 for an 88 milliliter size bottle. 88 milliliters, that's the stupidest random number. The original Tricorn formula launched at our New York City Emporium in 1941 and sold out within weeks, quickly becoming a favorite of Cole Porter and the theater and literary crowd. You know you want to wear that. Caswell Massey is actually a hidden love of mine. Some other fragrances I really dig. All right, let's get some easy ones going in here. How about just gentlemen? Givenchy gentlemen, not gentlemen eau de parfum, not the new gentlemen eau de toilette the original. Coming straight out of the 70s, still smelling really nice. Uh, as long as you're okay with fragrances that smell like they are coming straight out of the 70s, that is. A lot of people aren't. Strange, right? You give them something that smells hardcore, old school masculine, and they just look at you cross-eyed. Dude, I'm not wearing that. What are you talking about, bro? Let me get that swatch, though. Patchouli, leather, civet, honey, and cinnamon. You smell this, and it is flipping awesome. Woody and earthy, maybe even ever so slightly animalic. Gentlemen is the real deal. Except for this cap, this cap is trash. Oh, from there, let's go to this one. Serge Luton, Laine de Vera. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Now notice on this, I don't even have the, uh, the spray nozzle in here, the atomizer. I just have the little stupid screw top. You know why that is? Because uh, when I first got this, I did go ahead and spray this on. <laughs> Then I went ahead and I unscrewed it and put this little cap back on and I was like, that's enough, thanks. Woo! Aldehytic, boys, this is aldehytic. It'll hit you strong, it'll hit you hard, it'll hit you fast. Really metallic, like very, very metallic. It's soapy, it's fresh. Uh, some people would also compare it to the smell of blood to an extent. Yeah, it's strange. I got this many years ago. I had plans to review it back when I first started my channel and I just decided not to, frankly. Have you smelled it? Up next, we're gonna throw one out there to Michael Malul with Citizen Jack Open Road. Have you ridden on the open road, my friend? Yeah, me too. 
Citrus, ginger, vanilla, a little bit of tonka in here. Just a really easy going kind of fragrance, you know? Citrus and ginger in the opening is the most go-to sort of opening in men's fragrances ever of all time. So easy to pull off and make smell so nice. The vanilla and toffee give it a little warmth, a little sweetness as it dries down. It's a really easy to wear kind of versatile scent for spring, summer, and fall. Really, you probably could pull it off year round, actually. Shameless self-promotion. If you ever shop on uh, Michael Mullo's website, use that code GENTSENSE. Save yourself 20% off. Gent sense. Now I have to throw in a little Dracar, but it's not gonna be Dracar Noir. It's gonna be Dracar Essence. Now I could have gone more difficult here. I could have put in the original Dracar or Dracar Dynamic, but we're keeping it pretty easy here. Like I said, Dracar Essence, you friggin' loser. I'm just playing, you're not a loser, I think. Here's the trick with Dracar Essence. If you ever wanna buy it, get it cheap. That's how you can make sure that you're not disappointed with this one. The cheaper, the better. It really goes with most things in life though, doesn't it? But that goes with all things in life. The cheaper, the better. Unless the product you're buying is cheaper for a reason and then it explodes because you didn't pay enough money to get something quality. This one's got mint, lavender, citrus, musk. And actually some people have found a similarity between this one and Sedley from Parfums to Marley. Do I think this is a legitimate alternative to Sedley? Maybe if you like really stretch out your imagination, it could be. How confident are you in your imagination? Hmm? It's a pleasant fragrance, easy to wear, nice for summertime. Speaking of summertime, Azaro Maritimo. It's from their Solarissimo line. And uh, I gotta say, I really dig these bottles. I like that gradient. I'm a sucker for a gradient. I, I turn into just like a little chimpanzee or something. You show me a gradiated bottle and I go, <laughs> that looks good. Tell you what, this stuff actually smells really, really nice. Mine's a tester. I actually took a cap off another one of these I had and put it on here to make it look nicer. Cause when you get a tester, it looks like this and I hate that. Got notes on the back here, lemon, calypsone, cedar. Kind of a sweet, fruity, aquatic fragrance. Super easy to wear, very pleasing. Great scent. Now look at this absolute catastrophe of a bottle. Horrendous. It's gonna friggin' sear your eyes out. It's gonna give you ocular cancer. Just Cavalli, blue. So maybe that doesn't look too bad from where you're sitting. Oh, but dude, this is, oh, it's pretty bad. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's also really weird because it's it's like pieced together strangely. There's this plastic piece, which is this part. And then that's kind of like slapped onto this glass bottle. And then the atomizer is inside here. So you, you press down on the top. It's kind of weird. I'll show you. So here we go. Ugh. Ugh. Synthetic. Ugh. Synthetic. Ooh. Ooh. Some fragrances really hit you with that synthetic vibe. Strong. Not always a bad thing. Not always a bad thing, but just be aware it's there. Here's the deal with this one though. Once you let it settle down, it does get better. But man, off the top, it's got a little wang to it in a bad sort of way. Once it settles though, it gets a little bit similar, vaguely, faintly, to Kenzo Air. And man, I love Kenzo Air. Kenzo Air, really nice, discontinued vetiver fragrance. Love the bottle too. The bottle for Kenzo Air is kind of weird also. It's, it's a very unique setup, so. I guess it makes sense that this is also a very strange bottle. I do dig having it in my collection though, even though it is hideously ugly. Now, if you've made it this far with still having smelled nothing, hopefully one of these last two is gonna bail you out. I would hate to have to get the loser stamp and stick it right on your forehead. Gucci made to measure. Have you smelled this one? Hopefully you have. I've spoken many times on this channel in the past about how I really love Gucci by Gucci. I dig that fragrance, it's my jam. I have not spoken as much about made to measure. Very rarely, actually, if ever. Now here's the deal with it. I think it actually smells great in the opening. Really pleasant. Keep it on the down low. Lavender, plum, cinnamon, juniper, it's good stuff. It's clean, it's fresh, gentlemanly, a little bit sweet, really appealing. So what's the problem then, right? It smells nice. The performance sucks. Now you might say, oh, I'm sure it's not that bad. It's pretty bad. It sits low and close to my skin. Now you could say it makes sense because the fragrance is named made to measure, like a made to measure soup. Do you know it's hugging you tightly because it was made exclusively for you. Except when it comes to a fragrance, typically you want somebody to actually be able to pick it up. You don't want people to have to be like a dog 
sticking their nose right up your backside to be able to pick any of the fragrance that you have on up. Oh yeah, yeah, I can smell it. Pretty good, man. Can I move my face away from your neck now? My friends, I have saved one of the very best for last. It is the Dreamer from Versace. Come on, a lot of you had to have gotten bailed out with this one. Actually, I'm thinking, I did this video completely screwing around for April 1st in case you haven't caught on, but I'd actually do another one of these and try to make it more difficult. Just go, you know, with some of the deep cuts from the collection. See how many of these you guys have smelled. Some of the stuff I've never featured before, some underground stuff, you know, real hush hush. Now I love the Dreamer. I'm a big fan. My wife bought this for me years ago. I've got uh, this bottle that she bought and then I have a vintage bottle as well. It's got tobacco, lavender, sage, and tonka as some of the notes in the fragrance. The opening sometimes can be off-putting. Some people don't like it, especially people who haven't smelled a lot of fragrances. You know, the plebs out there, they smell it in the opening and go, oh, hmm, no, it's different smelling. I don't like it. If you don't like the opening, I'm just playing. You're not a pleb. Frankly, I love the opening though. I dig it. I like that little aromatic slap to the face, you know, abuse me a little bit, the dreamer. I like it. As it dries down, I dig it as well. I think it smells nice the whole way through. So anybody out there hating on the dreamer, mm -mm, mm -mm. and that's it on this April the 1st. If you have smelled at least one of these, congratulations, you are not a loser. If you have not smelled at least one of these, in case you guys didn't catch on, it's friggin' April Fool's Day. Come on. All right, guys, thank you for hanging with me till the end here. Stay safe out there. Let me know in the comments. Are you a loser? Are you not? Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.